You're listening to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast, episode six. Today, I have Kevin Koskela with me. He's the owner and operator of Freedom Loving Podcast. You are going to love his advice. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast, the show where every week your host, Daniel Carbonell, will share with you the best tools and strategies that will help you finally say goodbye to your job and start living your life with freedom and purpose. Now, welcome your host, Daniel Carbonell. Yes, this is Daniel and welcome to another edition of the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. I am very, very grateful that you have decided to join us. Thank you so much for being there. I'm very happy with what is going on with the, with the show, with the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. Um, we have a lot of more views, more people coming in. And, uh, you know, we had uh, James Martel last week in our episode. That was really, really nice. We have also Erica Duran and Ricky Shetty from DaddyBlogger.com. That was really, really nice. Good people. Now, um, the weekend here has been fantastic. I'm in Florida right now, so the weekend was great. On Saturday, I got to hang out with quite a few friends, which was really, really nice. And then on Sunday, I got to go to the beach here in Florida, which is amazing because I know in a lot of, in a lot of parts of the U.S., is the weather is not as benevolent like here. But I'm really, really happy that in my neighborhood... You know, I get to go to the beach and um, people come for to have a vacation right here. So I love that. And then in the afternoon, I actually went to have some Peruvian food in a place here in Florida called La Panza, which means the belly, right? And it was actually really, really great food. So if you're in the Florida area, check La Panza out. Very nice. Now... Before we dive in, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions or even if you want to be featured on the podcast, I am always happy to help. And you can reach me here at helpdesk at wakeuptofreedom.org. That is helpdesk at wakeuptofreedom.org. Now, in the last episode, we talked about uh, running a freedom business with Ricky Shetty from daddyblogger.com and his approach on how to get started even if you don't know how to, and you can listen to that episode at wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash episode 005. Today, I have a very special guest. I am really, really excited to have him here with us. I am here with Kevin Koskela, the owner and operator of freedomloving.com and the Freedom Loving Podcast, where he talks about his definition of freedom and how to get it. In his podcast, he interviews entrepreneurs who manage to travel and work at the same time. Also, he shares valuable advice on how to create freedom on your life. So let's continue talking about freedom loving with Kevin and his approach of, on building freedom in an unfree world. So you can live a lifestyle with more flexibility and more income as well. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hey, Daniel. Thanks a lot. It's uh, great to be here. I'm very happy that you're here, Kevin. I have to say um, I'm a... Uh, uh, avid listener of your podcast, actually, the, the Freedom Loving. That's how I found about you. Um, I think, I'm not really sure if I, uh, I think I probably heard you with James Martell in his show. I'm not really sure about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was right? on that show. Uh, I think that was last year. Yeah, I think I heard that episode. And then from there, I started listening to your, to your show. Really, really nice. I like cool. the style. Uh, you have this rock and roll, this, uh, I don't know, grunge <laughs> kind of. I love it. I feel a uh, a little jealous. I just don't want to put salsa here or something like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be pretty cool. A right? salsa here. Yeah. So, so Kevin, um, before we go any further, I would like to primarily, probably, would you please take a few minutes and tell us a little bit more about you? I mean, share a little of your story if you could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I I grew up in Northern California, the Bay Area, and uh, I think from an early age I craved freedom and. Uh, so like I didn't really do too well with the whole like being punished for things and, um, you know, being sent to my room and things like that. I think that's really for me, that's where it all started that I, I couldn't deal with it, with the idea of being feeling like I was trapped, like I couldn't uh, do what I wanted to do. And so as I got older and uh, went to school, I really uh, had an, an unhappy time in a lot of my school years. So I went like in high school and then in college, I just never really felt like this is what I want to do. And I never really got super interested in many of the 
topics that were being taught or, you know, because it was because it was more of a top down kind of philosophy where this is these are your options and they're very the options are very limited. And so you're going to learn these things. And it's basically like, yeah, the, the choices were not there. And so I got out of school and um, feeling like, OK, now I'm free. Now I can do what I want. Right. But then I, I sort of went with what society sort of expects from people, especially, you know, in our country where it's like you go to school for years and then you get out. And if you are interested in business like I was, you go to uh, a company or a corporation and you start putting in your time and you you uh, the, the goal is to, to work your way up the corporate ladder. And uh, so I started doing that because I just didn't know anything else. Like I didn't really think about at 22 years old, like I didn't think, well, I could start a business or I could do anything. I just thought this is it. You work from eight o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. and you hope that you get a promotion and then you hope you make a little more money along the way. And um, but eventually, after a few years of that, uh, bounced from different a few different companies and then found that that was sort of uh, as, just as limiting as everything else, like as, as everything else I had done in my life. So I felt uh, really trapped when I was working at companies. So I my solution was to quit. Like I quit a few jobs where I was like everything was fine. It wasn't like I was hating it, but I, I mean hating the job itself, but I just didn't like being in an office all day and I would just quit and I think – well, maybe the answer is going to a different job. So I get a different job. And, you know, these were like sales, marketing, account management, things like that. And I was mostly working in high tech at the time um, because that's where most of the jobs were in my area. And so uh, but eventually that kind of <laughs> that led to me realizing that this was no freedom at all. And and I, I was falling into this trap of like, you know, living the the typical American lifestyle and um, didn't like that at all. So I ended up starting, uh, I, I ended up, I was working at this one company and it was right around the dot-com boom. So the, early, the late 90s, early 2000s. And they, uh, they had this big layoff and I was one of the people that got laid off. And so that kind of made me, sort of forced me into a decision. So I started interviewing for other jobs, but my heart wasn't in it at all. Like I really didn't want to uh, go just work at some other company. So I started um, I started actually do, giving people swim lessons because that's, it's kind of my background. I was a swimmer in, in school and, uh, I thought this would be fun. I've never done this before. So I started doing swim lessons and then I started doing some personal training. So like, it, you know, h helping people to get healthier and, and more fit. And, uh, that was, that was pretty cool. Like I was sort of enjoying myself, but I also wasn't making a lot of money and it wasn't really a good career path for me. You know, and, and I could see the ceiling I, in the long run. I was really going to be limited. So I um, I randomly started a, a website with the swim lesson. Like I turned it into kind of a swim lesson business and I started a website and that just kind of slowly led to me uh, building a web business. And as soon as I uh, like I started learning this, I started learning how to build a web business like the light bulbs went on in my head. I was like, this is, this is everything I've been looking for this entire time is being able to build something that I can make money with online. I don't have to go anywhere. Like that was so exciting for me that even I, like my, I made one sale. I remember this. I made like my first sale. I was so excited about that and how this just represented so much freedom to me. Like I just made that sale without leaving my, my home. Like I didn't leave home. I just like made 20 bucks online. And so, uh, that was amazing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how far down you want me to go, but I could keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I love it. I love it. Um, I think I saw your, your website, um, when you, I think right now it's a triathlon website or, or I'm, yeah, I'm it's called it. It's called Tri Swim Coach. So Tri is triathlon, and okay. so triathlon swim coach. And so that's uh, basically I, I was coaching swimmers, and a lot of them were triathletes. So that's how I started that. It was like sort of a, a niche market there where I, I was doing adult swim lessons, but then I niched it down even further to tri adults that are wanting to do triathlons that want to get better at swimming. And it so. seems to 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 work, right? It seems to work that you niche it down that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, when I first thought of this idea, I never thought it was like a full time business. Like I was thinking, you know, I just thought, oh, there's a market out there for people that want this help. And I, I was coaching. I was living in San Francisco at the time and I had about 
I had like seven people, I think, that were in my group. I had this you know, kind of group um, training, uh, the training group that I was coaching. And and then I started taking on the one on one lessons and uh, people just kept coming to me. And I was thinking, well, this is just a small sample of what's out there worldwide. So putting up the website, I was just trying to find people in any other parts of the world that maybe needed this help. And nobody else was really doing that at the time. So I took that niche and just ran with it. And you know, it turns out there's a few million people around the world that do triathlons or, or maybe want to do triathlons. And so the market is, is small, but it's uh, worldwide. It turns out to be you can do a full time business around this. And that's exactly what you can do when you have an Internet business and you can reach out to anybody in the world. That's amazing, uh, yeah. Kevin. Um, so can I ask you a question right now? You were talking about how you started your business, your uh, swimming uh, website, right? Swimming t uh, lessons. And um, at the beginning, you say you didn't really think that it was probably going to be a profitable business. But what kept you going when you were not making money at the beginning, let's say? What, what was the, the thing that kept you going with this little website? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So I moved to San Diego around that time and I, I really had to find ways to make income of some kind. So I had the website, but it, it was barely making anything. It was, it was just like a few, I, I was making like a few sales. I was selling an ebook at the time and I was making a few sales a month. And I think the ebook was like 20 bucks or $25, something like that. And, uh, so it was, it was exciting, but I wasn't going to support me, especially in an expensive place like California. And so I took a couple of part-time jobs, uh, and what, ha what helped me to really get motivated to keep going and, and pushing through is that the part-time jobs I, I wasn't really into, I, it, you know, I had, I, I had bosses again, and these were kind of jobs that just brought in a, a, just enough income to get by. And, um, I was working at a real estate, uh, agency and I was kind of doing like running around, putting up signs and, um, I was working for, uh, a couple of bosses and it was, it was okay, but the money wasn't great, of course. And, and I didn't really like, again, having a boss. So, uh, that had that. And then I was, um, I was working at a, a swim club and I was teaching like the young, the little kids, like ages five and six, and then up to about age eight. And that wasn't exactly where I wanted to be because the young group, it was more like, um, instead of actually teaching them things, they wanted me to sort of, have, like babysit them. And I was like, I don't really, this is not what I want to do at all. So, and I, again, I had a couple of bosses there and they were very strong headed in what they thought the way things should go. And I had different opinions. And so that really was not a good fit. The, the other part-time job was very, not it, it, what I was interested in. It was just for the money. And so I could just, you know, see, and then beyond that, I was, I was teaching swim lessons in between those jobs and then when I had like a couple hours in the day, I would work on my website and I would work on my um, my book and my materials that I was selling. And so it, it, it forced me to really work hard at that and get be very efficient because I didn't have much time every day to do it. And I and the, the motivation came from not wanting to go back to any sort of life where I had to have a boss and I had to be at a certain place at a certain time and all that. So, yeah, definitely. I uh, totally relate with that. I heard, I think it's Tony Robbins who said uh, that inspiration or desperation are the forces that move you, right? So <laughs> this desperation, I mean, I think if you have desperation in your life, it could be a good thing. So it makes you, you know, it makes you move forward and push push harder. Um, Kevin, can you share with us what is your definition of freedom or, or your definition of a freedom lifestyle? Yeah. Yeah. Just to go back to what you were just saying, I, yeah. I totally agree with that because I, I read this book, um, uh, the, uh, what is it called? Power of broke. Okay. That's it's from uh, one of the guys on uh, shark tank, Damon, Damon Johns. Oh, really? And, and it, 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 he talks all about that, like the power of coming from a desperate situation. And that's, that's actually where I've done the best work in my life is when I feel like I'm, my back's against the wall and uh, I've, I've got to do it. I've got to make it happen. So that anyway, that's just a, a reference I, I think that is really applicable to anyone that's listening here that wants to break free. A hundred percent. Yeah. I I, uh, I remember when I was, uh, um, when I didn't even think about starting my own business or didn't even think like when life was comfortable enough and I was just 
watching video games or watching sports <laughs> with my beard, you know, like no future plans, no nothing. And I was very comfortable. So in that time, I didn't even want to do anything. Like, right. there, it was no, no desperation or, or I was not inspired either. So yeah, great, great point yeah. with that. So yeah. yeah, I wanted to go back to that, to the, to your definition of freedom. I mean, like, yeah. uh, I guess freedom for many of us can be a little different, uh, even though it's the same, uh, um, probably definition, like a general definition, right? Um, yeah. Tell me, tell me, please, what what is def, uh, what is your definition of freedom? Yeah, typically, I, I I've been I've been asked this question quite a bit because my podcast is Freedom Love, and and, and you're obviously in the same boat, or yeah. you have freedom <laughs> in your podcast title. So. Um, my definition is, is of how of freedom is no unchosen positive obligations. So and that's kind of a, a lot of, you know, it might not make sense to people right off the bat, but it, it basically means that I don't have to do anything. Like I don't, there's nothing that I, I have that, that is I'm being forced to do. Like I, so, and that could be, that, that could be in any realm. It doesn't have to be like money where people instantly think like, well, you have to make money to live, right? So then that's something you have to do. But there's all kinds of ways, like what does it mean to live? Like to, to live in a really nice house in a really nice area? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna, that's one thing that you will have to do. Well, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you don't, you can uh, live in a place that you're happy with that doesn't cost a lot of money. Or you can figure out a lifestyle that works that is very inexpensive that you don't need to make you know, you can make a bare, a bare amount, a minimum amount of money that gets you the lifestyle that you actually want. So, and, and, that, and that could be relationships as well. It could be, um, you know, friendships. It can be uh, anything in life. Like uh, if you are at a job or a place that you're living and you feel trapped, like let's say you signed a lease for a year and you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm trapped. I, I can't get out of this. I don't want to live here, but I, I'm, I'm stuck because I signed this lease. Well, there actually are ways to get around that. There are actually are ways to get out of that, whatever that situation is. It could be, a, you know, again, it could be a relationship, it could be a marriage. Um, it, it, there's, there's always a choice in the matter. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do that. And a lot of people get, you know, they fall into these traps and they become, they make themselves unfree. They make themselves, uh, they, they take the freedom away from themselves and no one's doing it to them, but they just think, Oh, I can't, I can't move. I can't do anything because I have this mortgage or I have this, you know, this child or some, whatever it is. And they think that's making me unfree. And that's where I believe that uh, freedom comes from being able to figure out how to completely, uh, eliminate or at least minimize the, that level of feeling trapped. Yeah. I love that. Um, there is, a. I wanted to talk to you about the financial independence, you know, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that when you talk about to have the freedom to choose, you know, even if you're in a marriage or if you're in, in a lease and you want to choose a different path, many times I think that something that stops us is the fact that you probably have no money for, you know, to, to get out of the lease or you have no money to, um, I don't know, to get out of your, the state where you are, you want to go to a different country, a different state, whatever. And I guess, you know, having a job and having no money sometimes is, uh, is one of the limitations that we, that we have. Right. right. So, um, like I have this, uh, this book by Dan Locke is called, uh, fuck, uh, F you money. Sorry. <laughs> F you money. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, and, it. uh, you talk about F you money because if you have the money, sometimes you can say, you know, F you and that's it. I'm out. You know, it's like right. you can have that decision making. So, uh, in order to have probably some type of, uh, financial independence, you have probably to have your own uh, business or your own freedom business. Right. So what do you respond when somebody asks you if it's too late? to start a podcast or a blog or, or any of those online businesses? Uh, it's, I respond with that it's never too late because, you know, when I started in 2000, all the way back in 2003, I, I started my first website. There were plenty of people that were saying that this is, yeah, there's, there's too many people already doing things online. It's all, it's all been done. And you might as well just go get a job. So it, it's it's really never too late because if you have something that you're excited about and 
let's say there are maybe 10 other people that you know of that are doing something online in that topic or that um, or that area, like, it, you know, whatever, whatever it is, it could be like knitting or what, you know, teaching <laughs> yeah. people how to knit or something like that. And, and you, you're looking at all the people that are teaching this thing. And you're like, Oh, forget it. There's like four podcasts and there's seven blogs and there's all this stuff, stuff already out there. That doesn't mean that you can't do that thing and start it and, and actually make money in that, in that niche, because you have a different way of talking to people. You have a different personality and all the people that are doing it. And so you're not going to attract the same exact people that they did, but you'll attract different people. And some people will just listen to your stuff or read your blogs or, or whatever, and they'll be turned off. And then other people will be, will gravitate towards you. And, you know, it really is a matter of thinking about it as you have something unique to bring to the table in whatever area that you're going towards. And it, it is possible. I mean, now it does take time and work and effort and all that. There, it's not like instantly you, you start a blog and you're going to have 10,000 fans following your blog, but you can, uh, with, with, with that work and putting in the time and every single day, you know, giving it that effort, then you will have, uh, eventually you'll build up something. If it's something you're excited about, and of course you have to be excited about it or nobody's going to care. So, um, and that's something that I'm dealing with right now is because I'm shifting a little bit from swimming, which I still like talking about swimming, but I'm not, I'm not passionate about it. Like I was when I first started. So, um, I'm more interested in health and fitness. Now health and fitness is one of the most crowded, uh, areas online or niches online. There's millions of people teaching all sorts of different things about health and fitness, but I have unique things. I have a unique take on it. I have many things that I can draw in that would make me stand, that make me stand out. So I know that I can create a business around my own, uh, health and fitness teachings. And it's, it's not as difficult as it may sound given the pool of people that are already doing things in weight loss and health and fitness and, and all that, because I can take things that um, I'm also passionate about that and combine them. Like, let's say this idea of freedom that we've been talking about, I can combine freedom with fitness. And that's, that's kind of a unique thing. I mean, that narrows it way down. I'm sure there's other people doing this, but that narrows my s supposed competition way down to just maybe a few people. And, and so then, then I have, I already have a niche right there. So there's, there's a lot of ways, different ways you can do that. You know, you take, um, there's a guy named James Altucher or Al Toucher. And, um, he's a, he's a blogger. He started out as writing, uh, f getting a blog following. Then he started a podcast and he teaches, you know, he's kind of business. I don't, I wouldn't even say he teaches. He kind of just does these long bo uh, blog posts and, and interviews these, uh, creative business people and, and shows how things can be done. And he has this thing called idea sex where right. you take, two completely non-related ideas and combine them. And then that's your topic. That's your niche. And so a lot of people have two interests that they're really excited about and they have nothing to do with each other. And so then they combine them. So like the example could be like, if you're really into yoga and you're really into coffee or something, then you combine that and have yoga and coffee. And it's like, you're going to, you're going to attract this unique crowd that doesn't follow the typical yoga blogs or the typical coffee blogs or whatever. So I really, really like that. You know what? I think it's uh, pretty much like this uh, couple that I saw the, the, I think it's the winos, uh, the world with winos, travel winos. I, I don't yeah. know. I think you have them in your, in your podcast. I've seen them before. It's people that travel the world and they talk about wine and they, it's like traveling and wine at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, so, Kevin, what are, uh, let's say a person decides that it's not uh, too late to come into a freedom business and to start their own business. What is the, what is the best advice that you can give a person that is considering to start their own business? And, and so, let's say, so he or she can leave their jobs. It depends on what their motivation is, and it depends on um, what their background is. So, so I'm not sure your audience, if they are more on the technical end or not, but I'm guessing probably a lot of them are not yeah. super technical. Um, so I would say to not, the first thing is, and this is something I, uh, took me a while to start my first site is 
to not get overwhelmed by the tech because there's there is a lot there's yeah. a lot with tech and no matter how easy everyone seems to make it seem like a lot of people will say you know they'll they'll talk all about starting a business and getting going and how they'll get right into the marketing and how to get a blog out there and all that but there is a lot of tech that has to be figured out and that's uh, that's something that it's easy to get overwhelmed by right early on and so my solution to that early on was I don't want to I mean I, I did learn a tiny bit of HTML at that time just because I didn't know anything and so I think that is is a good thing but I didn't do it so that I could uh, build my own website. I just wanted to know a little bit about what's going on. And so then after that, I just hired people to do what I needed to get done. And uh, uh, the, the point that a lot of people get, uh, stopped that, that they kind of stop is that they think, well, I don't have the money to hire people to build the things that I want, but that isn't really true. You probably do have the money. You just, you got to think a little bit bigger than just like your local web designer because your local web designer, if you're in the U S you, it's probably going to be pretty expensive to build you even a basic website. But if you go onto something like Upwork or even Fiverr, if you really want to bootstrap your, your first business, Fiverr is a place you can get things done really cheap. You can get like a really basic website done and it's not going to cost you a lot of money. I mean, Fiverr is, yeah, they're not always five bucks. It's like that was the original idea is like everything for five bucks. But, you know, that depending on what you want, you can um, but you can get things done really inexpensively. People that are living in different places around the world that are a lot cheaper than the U.S. Um, I used early on. I used Elance to get a lot of things done. That's freelancers online. And I I use people in different parts of the world for different things. And, um, you know, I learned a lot through that. I mean, I had some people that didn't work out, but a lot of, a lot of them really were impressive for very little amount of money. My first website costs about a hundred dollars total amazing. To, to build. Yeah. And it wasn't amazing. It wasn't an amazing website, but that's where, that's where the attitude of just do it and that, like not, not try to get the perfect website, just try to get something up there. And then build from there because that's how I did it at first. It was that I I just wanted to get something where I could I could sell my ebook. Like that was I was like I want to sell this ebook, so I'll, I'll just build it enough to where I have a PayPal button and just the really basics. Once I started making a few sales, then I could put some of that money into making the site look nicer, making the site bigger, and have more features and all that. But I think the yeah the first thing is to not not be too overwhelmed and just you know be willing to hire people that, for things that you can't really do or you don't want to know how to do. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic point, and definitely with platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, you can really shine. I would say you know <laughs> let's say I'm I'm not a graphic designer either, and and if I want to like design a logo, probably will take me hours, and I want right. to do a good job when these people can do it for. I don't know, overnight you go to sleep and then the next day it's already done and, and it looks great. Right. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of people out there are very afraid to outsource for sure. Um, so besides the the fact that some people get stuck, uh, what are the biggest mistakes that you see on new entrepreneurs or, or people that, you, um, that you've seen that probably are starting out and what type of mistakes they do? Mainly the follow through, like uh, if you look at iTunes, if you just do search around on podcasts mm -hmm. and various shows, uh, there are so many shows that people started and they did a number of episodes and then they just stopped. And it's that's that's where I see people. Uh, they, they they quit before it's absolutely necessary to quit. So yeah, I think that it's, it's really hard to run a business. I mean, it's not, this is not an easy thing, no matter how, what your business is, there's going to be a lot of work involved. There's going to be a lot of time that you have to put in. Um, but I think that that sticking to it and, and if you really believe in what you're doing, just continuing to go forward and move forward and do a little bit every day and you'll eventually get there. And, uh, it's very easy to give up. It's very, it's, it's extremely easy just to say, you know, just, uh, like that's it. There's no way it's going to go anywhere. But, you know, I, I think that if you, if you have something that you believe in and you continue to just keep, keep pushing a little bit at a time and be consistent, then it'll, it'll eventually start to become something. And so I think that's one of the mistakes that I see people making is just quitting too soon and then going back to, 
the corporate world where you get a nice cushy paycheck and you know, you don't have to think about all these bigger things. You just can show up to work and then collect your paycheck. And, um, you know, it's in, in some ways that is an easier life, but if you really want freedom, like we do, like you and I do, then you need to stick it out. Like you need to really give it, give it a good amount of time because, uh, you know, the, the corporate world is not where, where you're going to find freedom. <laughs> Kevin, would you be able to go back to the corporate world? No, no way. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I know I, I couldn't. I, I made myself unemployable in around 2004. I decided that this is I, I'm done. I, I, I did this. I did that thing. The thing that I just was talking about, about falling back and going, giving up on the whole online business and all that. I actually did that in around 2004, maybe early 05. I started to think like it would be so much easier if I just had a job. So I, I actually, um, I pulled my resume together and I, uh, I applied for this company here in, in San Diego and I sent it in and like, and I actually had a, a contact at this company. So I knew it was going to get to the right person to, for hiring. And I sent it in and like two weeks went by and I didn't hear anything. I didn't get a phone call or an email or anything. And I, so I started And I was just randomly, I was looking at my resume thinking, I wonder what's on, what's on this resume? What, what didn't they like? Or, and so I looked, I had the wrong phone number on my resume. I was like, <laughs> somehow I put an old, phone, like a phone number that I hadn't, hadn't used in a while. And it, so they may have called me and they, they it just Amen. went to nothing. <laughs> so I, that was the point where I'm like, at first I, I, got, I got this sinking feeling, like, oh shit, I blew it. I didn't, I'm not going to get this job. Yeah. But then I thought, no, I, I don't, I, I need to not get this job. This is, this is absolutely what I need. I cannot give up. I have to, I have to keep going with this. I can't go back to the, because that, that was just one example of something that I didn't want to deal with. Like, I don't want to deal with someone else like judging me over putting the wrong phone number down. Like, yeah, it was a simple mistake. And I'm like, this is the exact, the exact reason why I want to keep going down the the road of having my own thing. Even if it's much less money, even if it's uncomfortable, much more of the time, I'm just, it's to me, it's totally worth it. Of course, definitely. Um, I remember I, I had this application and I, um, This application that tracks pretty much your movements, you know, how much you're spending sleeping, how much you're spending yeah. you know, moving here and there. And it track like my my work hours and my commuting to work. And oh, my gosh, like I couldn't believe how many hours I'm, I was spending, you know, traveling to work and also yeah. at work. It's just like uh, definitely I don't want to leave that. Um, Kevin, no. <laughs> no way, right? <laughs> Kevin, yeah. I, um, now do you have a couple of businesses online. Uh, could you share with us what is an online tool that uh, is a piece of or a piece of software that you use and then you have to have all the time? Well, I, there's a lot of tools. Um, it, so I'm going to say that uh, the one thing that that changed in the last maybe couple of years that I started using was Slack. Um, I'm, I'm not a big, huge fan of email in general. I've gotten better at it, but I used to be really horrible at email. Like I would either spend way too much time going through emails and sitting there just doing email, or I would just ignore the my email box and then it would just pile up and then I'd have to have this like 24 hours of just doing email. So uh, Slack has allowed me to communicate with people on my team just where things are just necessary, where we, we just want to send a really quick message about something, I don't have to open up my email. I just get the notification on Slack. I can check it quickly. I don't have to respond right away, uh, but I can if it's just a really quick thing. And it, it seems for me to work really well. And I, I think there's some people that it may not work for, but uh, for some reason, Slack has been the biggest thing for me in the last probably a couple of years, just, just in terms of like my Uh, my days and feeling like I'm connected to people on my team and not having to, you know, go back and forth on email a bunch of times. So yeah, that's a, that's a good tool. I mean, I could think of a whole bunch of other ones, but I'd say that's, that's one of the ones that is, is uh, probably the mo the biggest one for me. Awesome. Awesome, Kevin. And uh, any book that you will uh, strongly recommend to our listeners? Well, because, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about freedom 
Um, and I, I did talk about the traps, like falling into traps. Yeah. And so the one, the book that, and this is how I started my podcast after I read this book, it's called how I found freedom in an unfree world by Harry Brown. Yes. And that's, that's one I'd, I'd highly recommend reading before anything else, before any kind of like business strategy books or anything like that, because that gets you the foundation and the why, like the, what, why are you doing this? Like that's, that's the most important thing. If you don't have your why, then the, it doesn't matter how many technically, how many books you read and how many uh, business strategies you have and tech and tools and all that, um, it will fall apart. So the, how I found freedom book, it, it helps you to see things in a way that allow you to be more free, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter how bad things can get there are ways out of them. And he outlines all the different traps that people fall into or many of the different traps that people fall into and how you can think about it in a different way to get yourself, to make yourself more free. Because there's all kinds of things we can point to in the world that we can say, well, I'm not free because this, because that, because like, I mean, you could start with because I had a really bad childhood. I'm not free because, uh, my, because of my uh, boss. I'm not free because of the government and, and all these things, there's ways to, you know, like I said before, at least minimize that to a point where you feel a lot more free. Awesome. Awesome. And what's the name of the book again? Yeah, it's called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World and it's Harry Brown. Awesome. Awesome. Kevin, would you please share any final thoughts and your contact information so listeners can learn more about you and uh, freedom loving? Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, I talked a little bit about the tech, you know, getting overwhelmed by tech. Yeah. I actually have another I have another website called uh, Work Hero. It's useworkhero.com. And we help people with the technical and the d design tasks that often get in the way of building a business. So it's a it's a monthly service. So you can just do as many tasks as you want with us for a, a flat fee. So you can check that out. It's useworkhero.com. And we'd be we'd love to help you. We have two weeks You can do two weeks for free with us if you'd like. So, um, yeah, so that's that's mainly it. Uh, I can you can also check out my podcast at freedomlovin.com. And if you want to look at the website that I've been uh, involved with for a number of years, it's try swim coach, T-R-I swim .com. And I'd love to hear from anyone that's interested in any of this stuff, because I can talk about freedom and business building and all this like all day long. So it would be great. No, I love it. I love it. Kevin, thanks so much for inspiring us today uh, with your personal story, your generosity in sharing your thoughts and ideas. I really believe that listening to someone, you know, with such amount of experience and knowledge about this topic is truly invaluable. So thank you so much for being here today. I thanks, Daniel. See... Yeah. Awesome. Also, I can see we're out of time. So, Kevin, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, I really had a great time on your podcast and I love what you're doing. So keep it up. Thank you very much. Also, keep in mind that if there is anything we mentioned today that you missed, we take all of the show notes for you and you can find them for this episode at wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash episode 006. And a final reminder that if you like to be alerted each week to new episodes, I invite you to subscribe to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. So just go right now to wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash subscribe. I also have a very special free guide for you, the five biggest mistakes to avoid as an entrepreneur that I have created just for you that will help you to focus on one thing and shortcut your way to success. So that's for a very limited time that I'm offering for free. So grab your copy at wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash guide. Thank you so much. It's been great. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast with Daniel Carbonell. To download special bonus content, access to the show notes, and more, make sure to visit wakeuptofreedom.org. That's wakeuptofreedom.org.